This is Kimberly Quinn, host of the Minecraft podcast, and I can't tell you how much fun I have had doing this podcast. I, I started when the world closed over the pandemic in, a, in an attempt to spread some positivity out there and give people some strategies to enhance their own well-being and reduce anxiety and all that. Now, two years later, we're still growing strong and now listened to by 52 countries across the world. And I've even helped some of my students get going with their own podcasts. It's super easy to do. And I'll tell you, if you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it is the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. I'll just explain for you. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It is a ball. Start today. Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another Minecraft discussion today. My name is Kimberly Quinn. I'm excited on yet another snowy day. You won't be able to say that for much longer. Wow, I'm a winter person. It's just so freaking gorgeous. Anyway, we are going to talk about today um, about, about the fact, it's a fact, that we, we teach people, actually teach people how to treat us. Almost like I'm thinking of doing my professor thing, and then, you know, I'm on the smart board. Actually, I don't use the smart board that much, but let's just say I did. And I'm like, you know, writing stuff up there to teach people how to treat me. That is what we do every day, largely from what is in the subconscious, because we are rolling around saying and doing things coming straight out of the vault. About 95 or 96 percent of what we say and do every day is coming straight from the vault. And we teach people how to treat us, which is why it's so important to filter out what we allow, and the word is allow, to get in. Okay, so first, we're gonna talk about what happens because often, most often, the high majority of the time, where this, this sort of uh, dynamic comes from is when we were little, and we, were, we, were, you know, we, we leave you know, mom, and we're wrapped up in a, in a blanket, and sometimes, not long after that, we can be ripped out of our little baby frames. If we are born with a frame, Okay, they kind of like this invisible force field that separates us from other people. And as toddlers, we have our little toddler frames. And then we have our little kid frames and teenager frames. And if we continue up through the whole way, we maintain that into adulthood frames. However, when bad stuff happens to us, especially trauma, but when any really bad stuff happens to us, we get ripped out of our natural frame where we know where we end and somebody else begins. And so what happens when we're ripped out of our frames, we often just naturally learn to reside in other people's frames. We learn because we're not feeling valued, we're not feeling enough, we're not feeling lovable, we get all these shame messages about being flawed and defective. And so we are, we naturally, we're naturally inclined to want to um, not be in that kind of pain because it's painful and human beings don't like pain and all the way up to like excruciating pain and we're yanked out of our frames into those of other people, all kinds of little frames. So here's the thing, it can be, you know, yanked to and kind of reside, yanked out of and kind of residing in a partner's frame, which is super common. So the frame behavior what, that we're talking about is actually codependency, right? Um, so this frame behavior can also be more subtle. We can be at work, we can like where we work, we can like the people we work with. And when we're just engaging in a conversation of, you know, how was your vacation with somebody who's kind of got some influence at work? You don't really care about the vacation. Um, they might be a really nice person, but you're, you're, it's more about optics. And people seeing you ask her and she knows you asked her and just staying on the grid kind of thing. Now we can have that same conversation with that power that be influential person and actually care, which is different. Okay, but if we're just kind of, you know, we, we do these little bits of, of external approval all day long. That is frame behavior. Frame behavior. And, okay, then we amp that up where we um, actually need the approval, of compul often compulsively, need the external approval of other people. So by residing in their frames, you get a little approval fixed, 
a little approval fix. Okay, I feel good about myself for like the next 45 minutes and then I need another one and another one and another one. This is because we've been yanked out of our frames and we're living in other people's frames. And it comes from um, uh, not realizing, acknowledging and embracing our own self-worth, which resides in our frame, not their frames. All of our worth is here. Our self-love is here. Our own approval of ourselves is here. And here's the thing, this is like the frame of authenticity. We're born into it. Little baby authenticity frame, okay? And the authentic self doesn't need anybody's approval, but what's in here? It just doesn't. When we're yanked out of that authentic safe haven into you know, the sea of frames we're walking around in all day, then things get complicated, painful, and actually just false. You know, we're, we're living um, you know, like a false kind of existence instead of our authentic existence. Very, very driven by the ego. All this frame behavior is driven by the ego because the authenticity is here, okay? And the ego, the ego part of us, the, e the ego is actually the evil twin of the authentic self. The ego is what needs the approval. Does the approval seeking? Does um, all the people pleasing, like me, like me, like me, I'll do this for you, do that for you, do this for you. And then of course we wanna be noticed and acknowledged for it and get kudos for it. All of that is ego driven. The authentic self does not need approval. The authentic self does not need to please people for the sake of approval. Um, so let me just say this too, approval feels good. I like approval, we all like approval. Hey Kim, you did a nice job on that project. Okay, great, thank you. And I will literally stand there authentically and take it in to reinforce and feel that goodness. I, you know, if that person in front of me took the time to actually think out and, and say these words to me, I wanna be fully present and enjoy that stuff. Absolutely, and really breathe it in and keep it so that the brain also remembers what, what really good authentic words are like, it's awesome. The difference is the authentic self enjoys it, the authentic self doesn't need it. Because think about it, what, what you need means if you don't have it, you're debilitated or at the very least uncomfortable. The authentic self, if she has the approval, great, that feels wonderful, but if she doesn't have it, she doesn't care. So it, it, this is really important to know. So there's the whole people pleasing thing. And then, and then um, what else do I have here? Oh, the doormat syndrome, because the people pleasing thing is all part of the doormat syndrome. It's like getting welcome tattooed on your forehead. So we treat people, we treat people to walk on us we have, because we're walking on us. There is really not much worse than abandoning yourself, which is what you're doing as a doormat. And sometimes people are victimized early on from, from whatever happens. And I can't say enough how important it is to do the work to climb out of that. Because that victim thing, it's an illusion of power. So there may have been a lot of attention given at the time, and rightly so, because when people are wounded for whatever reason, and that can feel, that can really feel good, and we can want to stay there. But really, it's an illusion because the victim is powerless. We don't want to be a victim, okay? We want to be a survivor of whatever it is. And so it's very important to climb out of that because when we're walking around with the victim vibe, it's like wearing a sign saying, kick me and, and taping it onto your back like the bullies did back in the day, smacking a, a, taping a sign on a kid's back, slapping him on the back. He doesn't even know. It says, kick me. That's what we're doing. Welcome on the forehead. Go ahead and walk on me because I continually abandon myself. I abandon myself by the need for other people's approval. I abandon myself by caving in and not waving my arm when I have a good idea and I just stay there silently. Abandoning the self will attract more people abandoning you. Not taking, not, not, value, not value, valuing yourself and your opinion and your ideas will have others not valuing you, your opinions or ideas. It's just how it works. Even if they're nice people, you're teaching them, again, like up on an old school chalkboard or smart board saying, don't value me, I don't value myself, can't you see? Role modeling, oh, and also, don't res if you don't respect yourself, no one's gonna respect you. You, you come up with, you know, uh, with a you know, nice person, kind person, they're gonna, they're gonna be you know, kind and smile and do all that, and underneath, they're not taking you seriously, it's because you're not respecting yourself. It's, just, it's a definitely an energy, it's a vibe, okay? So we're teaching other people not to respect us, value us, cherish us, all that other stuff. Um, Okay, doormat syndrome, frame behavior. Okay, so number one is to be aware of your frame behavior. Number two is to learn to set boundaries. And we've heard this from lots of people out there. We know about setting boundaries. 
And here's the thing is this will become natural, natural, won't even take a lot of effort once you're back in your frame, frame of authenticity, okay? Boundaries. I think I've mentioned before that Brene Brown did work on this and she found that the people who, had, who are the um, best at setting boundaries were the most compassionate. Why? Because they value themselves. Therefore, they can value their frame. They can know what's too much, what's their limits, what they just plain don't want to do. Okay? I don't want to spend my life minutes that way. You might, you might not be so direct and say it, but in your head, you can smoothly make a choice to get you out of, you know, wasting a perfectly good su sunny Sunday afternoon, going to your, you know, third cousin, five times removes, best friends, beagles, baby sh puppy shower. I mean, you don't need to do it. Right? You can come out, you can come up with a smoother way to say it, but you don't want to do it. Okay, so um, but this is about self value. So it's very difficult for those in the victim state to set boundaries. In fact, typically they got an open door policy because that's what they're putting out there is this thing happened to me, whatever the thing is. I'm in that state of, of um, boundarylessness because of being violent, having my boundaries violated. And that's going to just. Like Oprah says, um, actually specifically with sexual abuse, is once that switch is on, it doesn't get turned off till you do the work. It's not fair, it sucks, but it's just true. It's just plain true. From someone who has survived sexual abuse, I know. So I'm not up here talking about stuff I don't know. I do know. I do know. I experienced physical, sexual, and emotional abuse, and it's taken a ton, ton of work to come back to here. Ton. I told you, I think I told you a, a couple videos ago, you know, when you're on the path, Sometimes, you're, you know, like you're feeling good, you have a bunch of in-the-frame days, and then you're like, looking for approval, whoop, back in here. That happens for a while, and it's okay. And when it does, you just gently bring yourself back in to your frame of authenticity. Tell yourself you love yourself. I love you, Kimmy. This is your frame. You don't belong in their frames. This is your frame, and I love you, and I'm wrapping around you like a burrito of self-compassion. That's what you tell yourself. Okay, and then uh, the boundary thing, okay? And then lastly is don't put other people or situations on pedestals because we tend to do that. We tend to, you know, people at work, we perceive, we're talking about the energy. They don't maybe even know. You've got them up here because they're above you influentially or, um, or and maybe just your friends group and you're thinking like uh, un underneath it all, you think you're not as important as they are, you're not as valuable as they are. They're more confident than you. They're more this than you, more that than you. They are reading all of that, even if they're not aware. And so here's the thing. When you're in your frame, everybody's even. I don't care how famous the person is. They're still a person, just like you. They're not more valuable than you are. We are all spiritual beings having a human experience. We're all just wearing a different outfit, okay? Spirit, we're just wearing a different outfit. That's it. Nobody's on a pedestal, okay? And here's the thing. <laughs> This is, this is a good one. I, 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 I got to get somebody. I think it's Aaron Dottie. Here's the thing with the pedestal thing. Um, when you treat somebody like a celebrity, even just in here, okay, when you treat somebody like a celebrity, they're going to treat you like a fan. Okay, that's it. Powerful, right? You treat someone like a celebrity, they're going to treat you like a fan. And it's going to go on and on and on. We reinforce it. We teach people how to treat us. There we go. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off for Northern Vermont on a beautiful snowy day. Have a mindful day.